Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, and in this case, Adobe's After Effects Creative Cloud, let's continue right where we left off in our last lesson, creating our video wall inside of Avid's Media Composer. And I told you that we were going to sort of take this and push it a little bit further. And what we were going to do was once we created that video wall inside of our Media Composer Symphony Timeline, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about exporting these elements from Avid's Media Composer and working with them inside of Adobe's After Effects. Because you know what? That's a very common workflow for a lot of editors. Some editors don't like to do all their graphics work inside of Media Composer. They like to do it inside of Adobe's After Effects. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you a couple ways to get your footage out. I'm going to show you sort of the way that everyone likes to do it, and then I'm going to show you the way that you should be doing it. Then we're going to get into Adobe's After Effects, and we're going to start creating that very cool video wall. And at the end, I'm going to throw in a little bit of a twist to show you how you can really take this effect to the next level. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Avid's Media Composer, and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid's Media Composer. And you'll remember from the previous lesson, we have our main sequence, our main video wall right here with our video walls rock graphic on it. I'm just going to come back to the beginning here. And then I have my three other sequences that contain my media. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this sort of two ways. I'm going to show you sort of the getting it out of Media Composer and into After Effects complete with the video wall and everything. And then I'm going to show you sort of the problem that I noticed that I ran into by doing that and how we can quickly and easily rebuild the video wall literally in a couple of minutes. Okay, so how do we get this footage out? Well, the most common way of getting the footage out for most editors is to simply export QuickTime movies of each one of these elements. Now, the only problem that I have with that is what if you get in, and let's say you had this shot hypothetically, and you wanted to get in and adjust it inside of After Effects. It means you had to go back into Media Composer, make the adjustment, re-export the clip, re-import re it into After Effects, etc., etc. And that whole process can be very, very time consuming. We don't want to do that. We want to work with all of the original footage and make it easily editable inside of Adobe's After Effects. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export all four of these elements here onto my desktop. But I'm not going to export them as QuickTime Movies. I'm going to export them as AAF files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first, the main video wall. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to come down to Export. Now, right now I'm on my untitled export setting, so I'm simply going to say Option. You'll notice that as a default, I'm on AAF, and what I'm going to do is say, don't include audio tracks, because, well, I don't really have any audio tracks, and we're just going to link to the media. I'm simply going to say Save As. We'll call this AAF Export. Make sure we got a lower case X here. There we go. And I should probably call it Video Only, because I think that's pretty important. There we go. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say Save. And on the desktop, I'll just create a new folder. We'll call this Video Wall. And I'm just going to leave it called Video Wall AAF. I'm going to say Save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with these other three elements right here. I'm simply going to select them all, right click, say Export, right into that main folder here, the Video Wall folder. I'm going to say Save. You'll see that it exports all three elements. I can now hide out of Media Composer by simply hitting Command and H on the Mac, or you can obviously minimize Media Composer if you're working on Windows. And now inside my Video Wall folder, I have not only the main video wall.aaf, and I've got those three sequences, sequence one, two, and three, that make up the video wall. Okay, believe it or not, that's really all the work that we have to do from Avid's Media Composer. I know you're thinking, well, Kev, it can't really be that easy. Ah, but it is. Let's now get into Adobe's After Effects CC and let's see how we're going to build this video wall. Okay, so let's command and tab into Adobe's After Effects CC, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And most people think the first thing we're going to do is simply right click and say Import. We're going to select a file and in this case I'll just select the main video wall. And they go to say Open and nothing happens. And at this point they get frustrated and they say, ah, you know what, this would never work. Let's go back and use QuickTime files. But you don't want to do that. It just takes a little bit of forward thinking and you can get this worked out. What we're going to do is instead of importing, we're going to navigate up to File. We're going to come down to, of course, again, Import. And I'm going to select Pro Import for Adobe's After Effects. I'm going to be asked where the file I want to import is, and of course it's on the desktop inside of Video Wall, and we're just going to select the main Video Wall for right now. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to say modify settings and we want to make sure, well first of all, that we don't have any field separation because I am working with progressive media, but most importantly we want to make sure that we're connecting After Effects directly to the Avid media files. What we would do is simply say OK and we would say open. Now one thing I want to point out is that Pro Import After Effects is only available in version CS6 and CC or is it? What's important to keep in mind is that when this project was bought from Automatic Duck and included in Adobe's After Effects in version 6, the previous versions became free by simply navigating to the Automatic Duck website. You can see them right here, automaticduck.com slash products. And here is the exact same plugin. Let's just come to the actual page here. Except the difference is that Pro Import here, we're just going to move this out of the way here, Pro Import here works with Adobe's After Effects CS3, CS4, CS5, and CS5.5. So if you're not using CS6 or CC, you can still have this fantastic option available to you inside Adobe's After Effects by simply heading over to automaticduck.com slash products slash PIAE and download the plugin absolutely free. All I'm going to do now is simply select the main video wall. I'm going to say open you're going to see now that what has happened is, is that one or more layer effects is not supported, which is fine. But take a look at what's happened now. I've almost got the exact video wall imported into Adobe's After Effects. You'll notice that we have the proper text and everything. It's just not positioned with the rotation as I had it inside of Media Composer. The other thing that you can see is that if I actually come, we'll just select the very first track here, which is right up here in the upper left hand corner. I'm just going to right click, I'm going to say reveal the layer source in project. You'll see that if I double click on the comp, the footage is actually a little bit bigger than the frame size. You know, it's not exactly the way that it should be. But take a look, I do have all my clips in here and I have all the available handles. So if I wanted to adjust this clip, for example, I could simply use the pan behind tool and adjust this clip however I need to. Very cool. This is why you want to export AAF files to have the flexibility inside of Adobe's After Effects. Now of course I could delete this uh, black background just like such and then go on to the next one etc etc. But like I said the problem is is that you'll see that it didn't actually import it that well. So what I want to do is just quickly rebuild this. And it's actually very easy. What we're going to do is I'm just going to delete the main video wall just like such. And instead I'm going to right click, say import, say pro import for After Effects. And I'm going to come back to the desktop. I'm going to come to video wall and I'm just going to select sequence number one. Now once I have sequence number one selected, I'm just going to come in and just double check everything. Everything looks good here. Yep, I think we're okay. Everything is framing in good. And I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import the other two sequences, two and three. Now, I don't know if it'll let me do two at the same time. Let's try it. Open. There we go. It did actually do it. Now let's see what error we got here. During multiple file import, one file had this error. Okay, that's fine. Let's just see what's going on here. Version number two. Oh, you'll see it's reverted the clips back to being their native frame size because they're DVC Pro. That's okay. You know what? We want to stretch these out because we have them in a 1280 by 720 comp. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and I'm going to hit Command Option and F to have them fill the frame. That's Control Alt and F for all my Windows friends out there. And let's just check number three here just to make sure we're okay. Guess what? I think we are good to go. I'm just going to remove that black background here. We'll go to number two do the same thing there. Very cool. Because you'll remember we don't have the same problem that we had when we were in Media Composer of putting emptiness in and layers getting all doubled up and things like that because we're in a compositing application now. So all I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to create a new composition 1280 by 720 2398. I'm simply going to say OK. And we're just going to call this main, let's try that again here, main comp. Okay. And what we'll do is just sort by name here. Now you'll see that the numbers were actually put first. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're just going to stick these into their own folder called precomps. There we go. Cool. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take sequence number one. We're going to drag it right down here as a precomp in our main sequence. I'm just going to scale this down to about, uh, let's put it down to 33.2. I think that's probably going to be pretty darn close. And you'll see that this is actually very quick to get in and set this up. What I'm going to do, Command and D on the Mac, Control and D on Windows. Let's just position everything roughly here. Duplicate that again. 
Let's position this over here. And I don't mind having a little bit of space in between my monitors here. And you'll see the reason that doing this inside of After Effects is actually very easy is that we can take all these layers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call them one, just for my own sanity, two, three. Let's just select them all. We're going to duplicate them, position them right up here. You'll see they've been called four, five, and six, which is good. We're going to select them all, just drag them down. Now it's kind of hard to see where the background of that shot is. I need to see the bottom. There we go. Give it a little bit of space. And again, one last time here, duplicate. Let's position them right here. Now, did I leave enough space in the middle? Not quite, but we can fix that very easily. I don't even mind here in this case if I take these and we'll just sort of position them. Actually, that's probably where we need it to be. Let's do the same thing with the bottom ones here. I don't even mind if they sit ever so slightly out of the frame. And what we've got now is a perfect video wall. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay. It's perfect, but the only problem, obviously, is, is that we have the same shot in every video wall. Now, what we want to do in this case is we want to say we're going to have a regular layer one, but here we're going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and we're going to swap this out. Boom. We're going to take three. We're going to swap it out. Now what we're going to do for four, five, and six is we're going to do things in reverse. We're going to go three. Now probably two, maybe I'll do one here because I don't want these ones to double up. Just like such. Now you'll see if I come back to the beginning here, what we have is we have our boxing footage over here. Now motocross didn't seem to swap out, so let's just swap that out. What we want to do is we want to leave this motocross, actually we want to have this motocross be our uh, time-lapse scenics here. And we can always get a quick preview of it just like such. There we go. Very cool. Let's come down to this element here. Now this element we're going to want to be time-lapse scenics. Followed by, of course, our boxing. And then we have our BMX scene at the very end. And you'll see, basically, in a matter of a couple minutes really, I had our video wall rebuilt with the ability to go in and edit any of that footage or quickly swap it out. Very cool. Now I could be done and say, you know, that's it. But what if I wanted to take this to the next level? And I wanted to get in and I actually wanted to make this almost like an infinite video wall so that it goes way off into the distance. Now how would I go about doing that? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Now I think for kicks, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a quick preview here. So let's come down to my timeline. I'm just going to preview this out here. You'll see this is all DVC Pro HD 720p footage. And this comp rendered like lightning fast. You'll see all the dissolves are in there as well. Very cool. Okay. So the question now is, is that how do I make this an infinite uh, video wall? Now obviously I could get in, swap as many of these out as I wanted to, but once I get in to start looping this out sort of in, you know, horizontal and vertical directions, we're obviously going to lose that uniqueness, but the whole point is we want to go for scale. We sort of want to go for style over substance, if you sort of know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pre-comp this entire element here. Command, Shift, and C uh, on the Mac. Control, Shift, and C for all my Windows friends out here. We're just going to call this uh, video wall pre-comp. Okay? And once I have my video wall pre-comp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my effects and presets, and I'm simply going to type in motion tile. There we go. I'm going to take motion tile, and I'm going to drag and drop it right down here onto my video pre-comp. Now, all I'm going to do now is simply come up to my output width, and I'm going to triple this. I'm going to put this at 300 and 300. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this element, and let's just scale it down and take a look at that. Now, of course, I could loop this as many times as I want. Now, where you're really going to see this, I'm just going to undo that for a second, is I'm going to take this element, I'm going to promote it to 3D, and let's rotate it off into the distance like such. Okay? And we can even send this farther. What we could do is uh, I don't need to go any higher, I don't think. Let's just adjust the width. Just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Now, take a look at how many uh, variations of this that I have. And what we could even do, just for kicks, why not? Let's take this and let's just rotate it slightly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it at about, I don't know, minus 50. And we'll just preview this here. And take a look at how fast this element is previewing here. I haven't sped anything up. You're watching this preview in real time. 
Now, I don't know how many versions of this there are now, but there's quite a lot. And I've created a very cool video wall. And of course, what's important to keep in mind is that these blank areas are actually transparent. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. I think in total we're probably talking about you know 30 seconds to preview this, which you're also talking about 30 seconds to render it as well. Take a look at that video wall. This is insane. Here we go for the playback. Look at that. Now it would look really cool if I went in and with the nine of them, I went in and put different footage in each one. Obviously I did this for time purposes, but you sort of get the idea. Now you can see right at the end down here that I need more video walls. So what I could do, of course, is simply come back up to the output height and we could just set that at a thousand. Well. Actually, I don't even need to set it at a thousand. I could probably set that at about 500 and that will probably do what I needed to do. There we go. Perfect. Done. Very, very cool. Now, of course, I did mention that this element is completely keyable, where we have the blank elements. I know that because if I come into my toggle transparency grid, take a look at that. Those actually are transparent. And of course, what I could also do, let's just go back to our black background here, is that I could come in, create some new text. Let's just type in, of course, this is a video walls rock, bunch of exclamation marks. What we're going to do is just take this element, we're going to position it uh, more or less in the middle of the screen here. Let me just turn my title saves on here. We'll just sort of put it about there. I think that's pretty good. And of course, I'm going to promote it to 3D and let's just set its rotation here on the Y to be, of course, minus 50, which is actually going to set this exactly. Let's do minus 50 here. There we go. Video walls rock. Now, of course, I could get in sort of position this exactly where it needed to be for the purposes of what we're doing. I'm just going to sort of do this quickly here. And let's just set our rotation to be pretty much the same here. And let's set this to be now minus 64. There we go. And what I also want to do is I actually want to take this and just position it a little bit away from the wall itself. Let's just put that on a position of 50 here. Let's just come to position here. We're just going to put it out here. So now we have two elements away from each other. And of course, what I could also do just to put sort of the icing on the cake, Command, Option, Shift, and L on the Mac Control, all Shift and L on Windows. We're just going to create a point light here. Just position it right there. Just going to move it out a little bit like such. Now I could also cast a shadow into the background. But take a look now. This looks very, very cool. And as you saw, it was also very, very simple to create. So I hope this tutorial has shown you the extension of the previous tutorial that whether you prefer to do all of your video to, uh, you know, video wall work inside of Avid's Media Composer, whether you prefer to do it in After Effects, you do have some advantages to doing it in a compositing application. I hope you've seen the pros and cons of doing it both ways. Now in our next lesson, I'm going to show all you Mac users how you can do the same technique inside of Apple's Motion 5. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.